Hi, I'm Matthew Sinkapalmi. Hi, I'm Matthew Sinkapalmi. Hi, I'm Matthew. Mine? Sinkapalmi. Sinkapalmi. Hi, I'm Matthew Sinkapalmi. Hi, I'm Matthew Sink. Wait, down, down here. Down. Down here. Hi, I'm Matthew Singapami, executive producer of the Lovejoy News Network. 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 Executive producer of the Lovejoy. Ow! Ow! Lovejoy News Network. Ah! Hi, I'm Matthew Singapami. I'm not Matthew Singapami. No, no, but I'm that's the saying. that's the joke. I I understand, but that's uh, whatever. Whatever. Okay, go, go. Just go for it. Go for it. Hi, I'm Matthew Singapami, executive producer of the Lovejoy News Network. Can't believe I just lied. Great. All those. Hi, Hi, we're Matthew Singapami, executive producer of the Lovejoy News Network, and you're watching Leopard Spotlight. Really? Wow! Welcome to the final edition of Leopard Spotlight for the 2016-2017 school year. I'm Matthew Sinkwapalmi. And I'm Haley Kranz. In the past weeks, our reporters have been hard at work to bring you the most interesting stories from the Lovejoy community and beyond. While creating a musical from scratch is nothing short of challenging, the advanced acting class was quick to turn a comedic idea into a theatrical work. Matthew and I give you a look behind the curtain. Here by the Musical was produced and performed by the Advanced Acting Program. With only nine students and two months to prepare, teacher Timothy Doyle discusses their expectations. So our goal was to create a production, front to back, and to make it completely original, completely, well, I say original, completely inspired, I should say, um, but something that everyone was able to contribute to in a different and unique way and for us to have a product by the end of it um, and to perform that product. Um, the performance of it may be more akin to like a workshop performance where this is a work in progress and we want to just see where we are. So that's kind of our expectation. So we're not, we don't have, you know, false illusions that this is going to be some kind of Broadway smash or anything like that. We're, we just want it to be something that we can be proud of. Junior Joe Cross, who suggested the subject for the musical, discusses the process of bringing the show to life. We started it out with a basic story. Then from there we wrote kind of an outline of the script. We then fleshed it out. We had a bunch of song ideas and we kind of assigned those to various people. So I wrote one, Hallie Stedman wrote a bunch, uh, Mr. Doyle wrote one. We put the script together and cast it and since then we've just been rehearsing. With putting in a lot of hard work in producing the musical, Timothy Doyle and Joe Cross expressed their pride. The students have worked so hard on this and they have put a lot of time and energy and love into it and I, I don't think that if it were something that they were dispassionate about, they would have done that. So I'm of course extremely proud of them, but coming from someone who is also passionate about this type of process and this type of product, like an original musical, I think it's so cool to see a group of just nine students come together and really make this thing happen. I'm really excited to be a part of it because it's not like something I've ever done before. It's just kind of like a very free and spontaneous thing that just kind of came out of nowhere and became a thing. And I think that's really cool because it's, it's our thing. We wrote it and I don't know. I'm just, I'm proud of that in a way. This is Haley Kranz reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. Coaches teach athletes to show their passion for the sport on the field, but one student chose to take the field to his backyard. Clay and Clayton swing by the house of Matt Almy. After a long season, one might think our Leopard baseball team would be heading to the field to practice or perhaps home to relax this summer. But as it turns out, it's both. Welcome to Pico Park, the Almy family's little known backyard ball field for wiffle ball. Really, my whole family, we've been centralized around baseball, and we love baseball, and once we got this house, we 
thought it was a perfect opportunity to build a wiffle ball field because, you know, what family doesn't think that, you know what I'm saying? So we, uh, we got the house in 2004 and we started building this in 2005 and uh, we didn't have any bleachers or anything until like 06 and then press box was in 010, the lights were a couple years ago, so we kind of keep gradually getting uh, bigger and bigger. Although one's initial impression might just be fun and food, upon closer inspection, it's a bonding opportunity the team does not get to experience during a real baseball game. Instead of focusing on winning, students at Pico Park focus on friendships. It definitely helps our chemistry and like our friendships, you could say. It just helps us uh, come together and try to play together as one rather than individually. Oh, it's fantastic. The whole, the whole idea of just coming together and playing fun baseball, you know, we don't get to do that a lot. It's the whole idea of the sandlot. You get together as buddies and you just play. And so it's really cool coming together with everybody, um, playing wiffle ball. You know, there's nothing at stake. Um, it's just awesome. It's all, um, it's all fun and games. We're still competitive, but, you know, it's wiffle ball, baseball, all the same thing. You know, everyone loves to be here just to have fun. It's not, you know, you're not thinking too seriously. You're just having fun. And I think that correlates to the baseball field. Just have fun and hit the ball hard. This is Clayton Houts reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. The Red Ledger provides a school of campus news while collecting multiple awards in the process. At the heart of it all is a close-knit group of editors who have an extensive history together. Parker takes us to the newsroom. After winning numerous regional, state, and national awards, three senior editors bring their six-year-long scholastic journalism careers to a close. I've been an editor for the Red Ledger since my sophomore year, so this is my third year. Well, since Ms. Sanders is my mom, I kind of already knew how to write news stories because she was always talking about them when I was in like elementary school. And then whenever I had her as a teacher, um, I learned how to actually write those news articles and how to take pictures with a DSLR camera. Um, how to be objective when writing a story and how to not use opinion. Like basically every single aspect of having a news sense I got from her class. The editors have been together since middle school where they were under the advisement of Nicole Sanders. I kind of see my classroom as boot camp and it's one of the best parts of my job and it's also one of the hardest in that I raise these kids up so that they can go in and step foot in the door of the Red Ledger and be good to go from the get-go. And that's rich and rewarding because it's like I've, I raise these kids up and they go and soar to amazing heights. But it's also the hardest part because they only get to have them for two years. So, And I think a lot of it is that they truly do care. Um, it's about effort, it's not about the awards. I know Mr. Hell and I have talked and previously with Mr. Higgins that um, it doesn't take an award to sh prove a, a good journalist. It's, a, it's about the service to the community. And while we are very proud of them for the efforts and the awards that they have won, it doesn't take that, an award, to make us or show that we're proud of them. Um, Jillian inherited a natural instinct as a journalist and that through her insight in serving the community has made her, even as she's grown and served, become an even better journalist because um, she's very driven and takes out for the underdog and that's the perfect example of a good journalist is that you're the watchdog for society. So, absolutely. Well, my freshman year was the last year that the Red Ledger had a print publication. Hallie Fisher and I were the ones that basically did the entire thing. Um, and that was only like a news magazine and it only came out four times that year. But prior to that, um, the paper wasn't able to cover as much as we do now because if something happens today, we can get it up on the site instantaneously. But um, back when it was a paper, it would take six weeks for a story to come out. I think transitioning from the middle school to high school program taught me a lot of range of skills. So I know how to do print, I know how to do online, I know how to take photos, I know how to do videos. So I learned a lot over the past couple of years. I just love the people on staff because the stories change every year. There's always something new that you can do. The photos change every year. But the people are the ones that I really like to talk to. Not even, because that's why you write stories is to get to know people. But I think the coolest people you get to know are the people writing the stories about people. Because those are the people that you really, really see their creativity and how they think and what they think is important. So I think you see a little part of the writer in every single story that they write. This is Parker Nolan and Fallon Brothers reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. 
Inspiration plays a major role in any artist's work. However, one teacher weaves her creative passion into her everyday life and even into the walls of her own home. Darren Shivani shows us the muse that moves Mrs. Beller. Amanda Beller teaches Art One, Drawing and Painting, and AP Art History, and she gives her students the opportunities that she didn't have when she was in high school. Um, and in high school, I didn't take art um, because I went to a small private school. There was really one option, and um, it just it didn't work for me. So I um, just drew on my own. It wasn't really until I got to college and was a double art major that I was like, oh my goodness, there's this whole like world of possibilities uh, for the arts. And I, I took weaving and textiles and um, drafting and painting and just fell in love with the whole process. And that really got me excited about about creating art and the possibilities of art. Um, and so, I mean, I don't know, I would, I would say pretty much college is where I truly was like, this is it, this, this is what I'm doing. Family has played a role in affecting Beller's view of art. I went to my grandmother's all the time and I would see her working and I would see the progression of a canvas in her studio. Um, and it was just, I mean, that smell of linseed oil, which has a very specific smell, very strong smell. And, um, you know, I have some of her brushes and just thinking about um, the nostalgia that I have tied to those smells and those sights, you know, I, I just love it. And I have a few little things that she, that she created. Um, but since I was very close to her, I, th I know she definitely um, influenced my affinity for oil painting and painting and just making in general. And I actually took a couple canvases that she'd started and I finished. Um, and that was kind of cool too, to kind of have that experience. An interest in contemporary architecture led the Bellers to design their own home. Um, my husband and I would be uh, in a glass rectangle if we could. We really, really, well, I really love contemporary art and he really loves me. So, or contemporary architecture and he really loves me. So, um, we wanted to go very uh, modern, um, but we also knew we had to kind of fit into the neighborhood. So we started um, with a, a floor plan that I found in Foil Magazine and really liked um, from LA. I modified it and um, shrunk it down and uh, took the, the ideas um, and, and sketched and then um, just a piece of paper at my dining room table and then eventually got out my architect's rule and drew it all just pencil and paper gave it to a drafter and he okayed it, you know, made it digital. And that was that. We found a builder and we bought double lots here in McKinney and um, just outside the historic district so we can kind of do what we want. So, yeah. This is Shivani Radhakrishnan and Dara Fadel reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. We hope you enjoyed these stories. Until next year, I'm Haley Kranz. And I'm Matthew Sinkle Palmy. And remember, if there's a story to find, we'll find it here on Leopard Spotlight.